I remember when I was very young and working on the music staff at Covent Garden, at, right at the end of the 60s, possibly even 1970, and I was asked to prompt, as everybody did in those days, every line of every opera was prompted. And I prompted him singing the Duke of Mantua in Rigoletto. And, of course, his huge physical presence from the prompt box was rather a worry because at the end of every aria, he's, he was so short of breath and the noise he would make uh, was drowned out by the enormous applause. But I was very close to him and I, I was conscious of what a physical effort it was for him to sing. But I was also conscious of the skill and technique and sound that this man had. And I think during those ten years as he was a young singer and then came to prominence and came to really fantastic fame. There was something in his singing that one felt was once in a generation, and it was to do with the way his body seemed to inhabit the sound, and the sound inhabited his body, and the two things were absolutely matched together, and the sense of security and beauty, powerful beauty of this voice, was physically memorable the way his sound cut into your body and I adored his singing and I think the recordings that exist and there are some at the end of the 60s the beginning of the 70s at that sort of time when he was at his freshest it's just amazing I mean it's another whole place from Di Stefano to me I prize Pavarotti for for something other a sense of focus in the sound and beauty, opulent beauty in the sound and his own control, being able to control it through these lovely phrases. And I think he was a very, very special artist. In fact, the first time I heard him, and it was years before I realised that it had been the case, was at the opening of the Edinburgh Festival in 1968 and I was given some tickets right along the edge of the front row of the dress circle and it was to hear an opera that I couldn't pronounce the title of, I Capuleti e Montecchi, and he was not the lead. Uh, another wonderful tenor, because they did it in that tenor version, was singing Romeo, Giacomo Aragal, incredibly handsome young man, beautiful lady, Anna Moffo, who I'd got used to her voice from Carrie Anne's recordings, and Tybalt was sung by Pavarotti. And there was a guy nobody had ever heard of called uh, Claudio Abado conducting. And it was incredibly exciting because of the quality of the performance. I mean, the fact that the performance was wonderfully rehearsed and was projected with such authority and passion. And I'd never seen anybody conduct an opera without a score. And to memorise these early 19th century operas is formidably difficult because you could go wrong at any moment. I mean, you know, where, where there are little bits here and little bits there. Beautiful music. And uh, something also happened at that performance that was very, very memorable. That, as you probably remember, the opera begins with a drum roll with a crescendo. And the first night audience at the Edinburgh Festival assumed it was the national anthem. And the chuntering of bracelets and necklaces and mutterings and handbags as this distinguishedly overdressed audience rose staggering to its feet for the national anthem and the orchestra proceeded to dazzle us and dance us into Bellini's very unregal music. And then they realised when they bothered to listen that they'd been made fools of and then they all had to sit down again. And because I was sitting right round the corner, I could see the whole thing happening. It was wonderful. 